All right, we're gonna talk about something that can be kind of depressing, but right now, I guess, isn't so depressing. So um, forgot to include it in my uh, effects of COVID-19 on me, and it's student loans. So the current presidential administration, so someone has to make a decision to do this, and it's the current presidential administration, which is the Trump and Pence administration uh, of the United States of America has been very kind financially in response to COVID-19. I My income is below the poverty line, poverty level. I am living with my parents. Uh, I do not have medical insurance, little things. Um, so the stimulus check on tax day, or when I did my taxes this year, 2024 to the 2019 year was, when, when living below the poverty line, and I could see situations where even living above the poverty line, uh, $1,200 can make a world of difference and open a lot of possibilities, even if it's just like driving around the state. I, I, I can pay for gas with that, I, and that helps my mental health, so there's I'm very grateful for that. And this is the second email, um, it might have been more, but second temporally far apart email I've received in regards to student loans and I'll read it so it says I'm just gonna read part of it because it's a little long tennis on December 4 2020 United States Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos extended federal student loan flex flexibilities currently the 0% student loan interest rate and suspension of payments on federal student loans owned by the Department of Education, ED, are set to continue through January 31st, 2021. So this is excellent news. What does it mean? So it means you don't have to make payments on your loans and no interest accumulates, which is huge because uh, I owe a lot of money. And so I don't have to make payments and then I can reapply my, so it, until after January 31st and we each, depending on when you graduated and that kind of thing, you get a different deadline of when you have to st start making payments. And if you can't make payments, um, like I can't, um, then you have to reapply to prove that you don't have an income and that kind of thing. Um, or if you do have an income, they adjust how much you pay. So my payments are, I have my loans, student loans through the Great Lakes Borrower Service or something like that, Great Lakes, um, Great Lakes Student Loans. and. So the exact figure as of right now, I have, this is how much I owe in student loans, is $44,000, okay, $44,511.49. And so I worked multiple jobs up to a hundred, or uh, there were times where I even worked hundred hours a week to pay for tuition and food and my room and that kind of stuff in college. And I still had to take on student loans. Uh, so I worked and loan accumulated my way through college. And so I have to work on these. They were, I didn't have to make any payments or anything like that when I was in graduate school. And then I quit with no degree. And so student loans are, it's not as painful a process as I thought it was going to be. Uh, just make sure to sign in before you're set to make payments apply even if you have no income and like my payments will be in three or four months uh, I don't have to make a payment they're in forbearance and then I have to reapply so I have to go in and reapply but the application process um, showing that I have no income because I don't have any income is actually very straightforward so it's a relatively painless process um, but it's very nice of the current presidential administration to do that and have no interest accumulate and to put off payments. It's it's not the same as loan forgiveness where you don't actually have to pay your loans. No, you still have to pay your loans. That number is still there. It's just, it's not increasing. There's zero interest accumulation. Um, so that's pretty, I am grateful for that. It kind of undermine the entire education process and kind of work in general to just forgive the loans. Um, but hey, I, maybe someone will do that someday and then we're just gonna be like, okay, so what? Um, things adapt and change to things like that. So 
in the academic, and for all we know that do the academic system really well. Um, it is possible to get a free college education in the United States of America. Um, I personally have done that. I got my associate's degree that way through a program called Running Start uh, in Washington State, and it let me do the first two years of college when I was in high school. And so if you are looking for a free college education, it's possible. It, you just have to be on top of it because <laughs> uh, running start was only possible when you're a high school student. So you had to be very on top of that um, and know what you want and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so that was just, I got that email today. So just, I have, let me look at the timestamp on it. Uh, 6.29 p.m. today. So that's pretty cool that it gives me a little more time. So I think the current presidential administration of the United States of America for that. Um, I, I hope that the incoming administration uh, is as gracious as the current one. It's, it's helped with my, my mental health, I'll say, these gracious acts.